Hey, man. Yeah. It's gonna be a good show. It's gonna be lit. Absolutely lit. Absolutely lit. Oh, this backpack, man. Yeah, how do you carry that around all I day, I know, man? I've got like eight laptops in it. Yeah, though. I know, you got a laptop, a new laptop every week, bro. You know, I am a little addicted to the technology, it's Kendall right. likes to I, say, but. I own like 300 discs that all throw the exact same way. Yeah, and you know, at least they're cheap though. They're just discs. Oh man, some of these discs are like 40, 50 bucks. 50 bucks for, for a, disc. a disc. For yeah, it's kind of crazy. That's wild. Yeah. This is my favorite one, the purple uh 68012. Oh, rad man. Yeah. Wanna, can we do a quick catch? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um Yeah, you're not supposed to catch the discs, only throw it though. Okay, you're right. Show me how to do it. Right. Oh, that made much more sense. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Bro, Josh, ha <laughs> things are really funny. He goes, ha ha, ha ha. Oh my God. Anyways, yeah. Also, I brought my CPA book because. Oh, bro, you got to study up, right? Study up, man. When's your next test, man? Uh, next weekend. So I'm just Bullshit. pulling my all nighters now, cranking all through it, drinking like hella energy drinks hella what, what coffee i drink black coffee oh black coffee only. you don't even fuck with energy no. drinks and i like to make fun of janelle because she likes uh creamer in her coffee like a little bitch but i drink black coffee because i'm a black man. yeah straight black coffee that's for like hardcore it. men only yeah I, know. I prefer to stick to colorful poisonous energy drinks true bro you really are into that yeah, green I do. shit you Looks know like the more toxic tasting the better yeah for me. toxic waste wow it's really smoky in here we should probably make it even more smoky yeah, cheers bro oh it was a weak hit my pen's fucked up my pen my uh, my, my know, pen's always say? having they issues they always are clogged what can you say always man clogged. so annoying man the the fucking mechanics of that shit yeah um, you would think you know mm -mm. and i would know because i've worked for cannabis companies in the past so Let's what's get up it. you're taking your test soon yeah this is uh the fourth test i'm taking far financial accounting and reporting nice um so yeah it's gonna be good is it hard and shit yeah it's like really hard dude it's like it's like hard you gotta be really smart like math and shit. like math is such, Janelle's such an idiot she was telling me the other day <laughs> that she wanted to get me this cool calculator for christmas and i told her i don't even fucking use calculators i use excel duh he's like excel i, I had to explain it to her it's ridiculous <laughs> she thinks you're in the stone age bro stone age no i use excel mm. yeah that's pretty cool accounting's pretty cool mm yeah that's oh nice. this is a sick watch you got man thanks man what is that it's a nixon bro nixon yeah nice and your yeah. lights out i'm really liking the march yeah. man can you new give me necklace, one of those too new necklace oh that's nice oh yeah. look our beads we're beaded boys yeah we are beaded boys we do believe in the crystals and the astrology thanks yeah. to our ladies yeah they are ladies they really have made us, us really into enlightened that. Yeah. yeah they have but honestly like i'm a sagittarius and like yeah. I, I mean that's honestly in my opinion like the best sign is sagittarius that yeah i just feel like you know i have to disagree with you though bro virgo is truly the best sign i mean virgos are pretty good too but i mean you guys are like a little crazy uh with how oh, i'd say sagittarius is our honestly little crazy. true so what are you studying here man um accounting numbers you see these fucking charts no, here this is and shit? boring actually why don't you just tell me about the disc golf instead yeah, disc golf's pretty cool i'm actually uh pretty fucking good at it because for some reason literally any athletic sport i try i'm good at naturally yeah. which is so funny because janelle can barely stand on her two feet mm. uh so you know but yeah i got my dog here too he doesn't give a shit about me though he no, hates me he hates you so he's not gonna come up here yeah, Anyways, man. I feel that. Yeah, I've been trying to going? promote my merch a little more. My yeah. lights out merch. Where do I know? get that? Milehire.com. I like skulls. Milehiremerch.com. <laughs> yeah, milehiremerch.com. Yeah, this is a sick skull, bro. Thank you. It's a real head. Oh. And that's why I like it because it was real. <laughs> so, you know, it's even more scary. Dude, have you heard? I've got something that's going to blow your mind. All right, what's up? Did you see the latest announcement from Mark Zuckerberg today, Mr. Alien himself? No. It was really weird, man. You want to check it out? You want to see what the future is going to look What's like? What's it going to look like? I mean, I'm excited for it. I love the future. Yes. I want to be a robot myself. Yeah, me I'm too. I'm hoping to be a cyborg one day and then go to space. And That'd I'm, be sick, bro. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to convince Kendall to just let me, like, eject my remains one day into space as a form of oh, burial. Oh, you do but, that? Uh, not legally yet, I don't think, but I assume by... By the 2090, time. when I'm 105, yeah. that they'll be able to shoot me off into space. Can, and hopefully she'll be dead by then already Josh? so that i can just make my own end of life plans 
true that yeah honestly i could see you starting like a whole new colony and shit i might and elon and with the way that this shit's looking i mean let's check this out i think this is pretty interesting bro i think you'd find this interesting john all right, all right yeah let's see what it's about here i believe in i believe in science i believe in the future here's so let's Zuck start talking by exploring what different kinds of metaverse experiences could feel like starting with the most important experience of all new project man connecting oh, with futuristic it. shit Good shit see that like in the future everything will be blue and like have lines <laughs> imagine oh, that's a lot of lines honestly it looks like an excel sheet to me and all you have to do is to put it on your glasses and then you're instantly in a virtual reality oh, so that's different is, from your oh, own so this is like the oculus on steroids yeah exactly it's like the oculus on steroids we it's love much better the oculus. your oculus is sick mark's got the vision Whoa. Look at this. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. Just gotta find some human clothes to wear, he says. Well, as long as they got mm. disc golf Look bags. Look at this. I'll right. be able to just Perfect. wear an astronaut outfit and I don't even have to own one. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Mark. Hi. What's up, Mark? Whoa, we're floating in the Is Damn, this not a future that you crazy. want, man? I'm a, I mean, I'm down for an adventure. Like, I'm, I'm all an about adventure. it. Put a microchip in my brain and I will live in the virtual world until what I'm able Kendall to get to about space. That, though? You know, man, she's, she's, not she's a little it. scared of it. I don't know why. I mean, she's got to just yeah. realize that this is the future and this yeah. is the reality of things. So I don't, I mean, embrace technology. For sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Embrace yeah. science, embrace technology. We're always moving forward here. Yeah. Speaking of which, today's Halloween, which is my favorite holiday because oh same it's my favorite holiday even though i haven't dressed up uh, in like a decade but yeah i love halloween you haven't dressed up in a decade no but like i promise you if you ask what my favorite holiday is it's halloween mm. well, even though i year. haven't carved a pumpkin in five years but if you ask me it's halloween we've carved a pumpkin last year bro on the sesh oh right yeah that yeah, was pretty good we yeah. won yeah no offense to you last year Loser, uh, uh, i was a signs. i was um What's his fucking name? Oh, I forgot. Exotic Joe. Joe Exotic. <laughs> Joe Exotic. <laughs> exotic Joe. And I was the little lion. You were the lion. It was very good. Very good costume indeed. Yeah, pretty good. Our girls were hot too. Mm -hmm. Carol was really stepping out that yeah, day. Yeah, me and Carol went wild, wild that after. Night. Oh, cheers mm -hmm. to that brother. Am I right? Cheers Amen, to that. babe. <laughs> babe. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what up? Welcome back. It's your boy, John. And Josh from hey. Mile Higher, Mile Higher Josh. Yeah, also from Lights Out. Lights Out, that's right, baby. Yeah, welcome back to the sesh. We uh, took over for the girls this week. Yep, yep. Figured that, you know, they need a little break and we could have our own show. We should start our own fucking podcast. Yeah, we really could. We could talk about um, all of the things science, mm -hmm. sports. Yeah, football. sports, definitely football. A lot of football. 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 Definitely. What do you think about. Uh, Number 28's play last night. 28's play? What team is 28 on? Uh, the Chargers. I think he's trash, man. I think I could do so much better if I was fucking out there. At least I could run, you know? They're so slow. Slow, yeah. All of them. <laughs> if only we were on the teams, dude. I've, I'm so passionate about football, and I scream at the TV as, as, yeah. as though I'm on the team. We believe that if we were on the Broncos, that they would be much better. Yeah, the Broncos you need know? to fire their fucking coach and we just hire me. We should be the coaches, their, absolutely. Their performance is just atrocious, mm -hmm. honestly. Atrocious. Anyway. Embarrassing. <sighs> Gonna get rid of all my merch and burn it. <laughs> You were a Panthers fan, but that I haven't no. seen you wear a Panthers shirt in years. Well, the truth is, I was only really a Cam Newton fan, and he got oh. weird and left. Yeah, he and got, then, he's weird now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, now I'm a Broncos fan. Cheers, Broncos Cheers. fan for life. I'm also a Rockies fan. Mm. Shout yeah. out to the Rockies fans out there. Uh, is that the Rockies, not the most embarrassing thing? The Rockies thing? blow, dude. Sorry. Oh no, they do. They're at the least worst you can get ever. beer though at the baseball games. Yeah, anyway. Today's no, episode of The Sesh, we are trapped. Honestly, guys, you did almost didn't even get a Halloween episode. Luckily, we were off on our calendar by a whole week. So we realized <laughs> we still had time to pull it together oh, because yeah, last week was a shit show. As you guys know, the last month of our lives have been kind of like, it's just it's been a shit show. It's literally wild. We say this every single uh, episode. We're like, it's wild. It's no. still fucking wild. Yeah. We keep Thank each you. having different crazy things happen in our personal lives and with our families. And like, we didn't even have the energy last week to do an episode to pull something together. So we thought we weren't going to do a Halloween episode, but we realized we were a whole week early. So we're still here. That's right. We were able to pull one together. I hope that, you know, we didn't get the webs, the webs this year. We stepped up with the fog machine, though. Fog machine, Hello. bitch. Hello. I want another fog, fog moment here. Yeah. 
And obviously, we we had some costume ideas earlier this summer, but then fucking Halloween sneaks up on you. You know how that is. And we yeah, could really only pull together this. So we had this brilliant idea. So now you get Josh and John today. That's right. So yeah, shout out to the boys. Shout out to Honestly, the boys. Shoddy for the boys. I think we did pretty fucking good. Your beard is amazing. You did excellent work. Like I really, I tried to really Corelli hard. stepped in. Corelli put in dimples on me. Yep. Can you see them? Yeah. Those Josh dimples. Can yep. you see anything with the fog? Yeah, probably. They're like, no, we can't see because you're smoking maybe we should hit, Maybe out. we should open the door for a bit. Oh yeah. Sorry. I guess it probably isn't a good. It just looks really cool. Yeah. It looks cool over here. Mm, okay, it looks cool to us, but then you look at that camera in the front. Yeah. This stuck. one looks like I'm in a fire. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, there are, there's a fire on the sesh, so Kendall was about to bring out the fire again. I um, vetoed it. Yeah. No fire with the spot. You're no fun. No the fun. Fido, the the Fido. The Fido. <laughs> the fire is a fun thing, okay? But we did also have some uh, little treats. We have some yeah, baby. hot apple cider. Cheers, mm, I love baby. apple cider. It's literally, I think it's just apple juice warm. That's that's right. And there might be some rum in it. Who knows? No one really knows. And then we also have some caramel apples that we can snack on. But I feel like it might be kind of hard to eat caramel apples yeah, while gonna we're bring doing a knife show. And I forgot. Oops. Oh, yeah. We need a knife. Maybe or we should get a knife. Maybe we should really just fucking go at it. Like yeah, just take a bite right now. Will this ruin my beard? Um. Will it ruin your teeth? Yeah. Let's just do a little. No, your teeth are strong. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my god, so heavy. Mm, ASMR. Mm. 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 Stan was pretty fucking good. I love caramel apples. Mm, me too. So good. What's that place we got we always get them at? Rocky Mountain Ro- Chocolate Factory. Oh. oh they're just fucking good. good. Mm-hmm. Dude. I'm assuming they only have those in Colorado. Mm, I don't probably. No, Rocky no, 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 no. They have no. They have them in California. I've seen them in California. Oh, really? Yeah. There's no Rocky Mountains there. Yeah, a bunch of fucking liars. Wait, are there? The I don't think the, far? No, the Rocky Mountains mm, no, are in no, California. No, no. no, the Rocky Mountains go Sorry, north man. to south. Sorry, I'm pretty man. sure. I'm being Josh. I had never known about that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making those look real good. Mm, they're really good. Yeah, they are good. Okay, okay I can't just get one. Chomp the whole time. You ladies look so cute. Tell us where your outfits are from. What's going on? What are you yeah. wearing? Um, I am dressed up as Where Halloween, just because. Just Halloween. Just Halloween. I just the was feeling just Halloween. the spirit of you Halloween. You have major Halloween vibes, dude. Was, Your eyeshadow is sick. Thank you. Thank Unreal. you. Thank you. And okay. the black lipstick. What brand is that? You know, it's actually a pigment. It's like a. Cool. Yeah, it's not even lipstick. I didn't even have lipstick. I had. It's like Ooh. a. It's, I think it's called like makeup and murder or something like that. And they have it like everything is like in little um poison bottles. Oh, cool. super cute! It's super super cute. I like that. Um, yeah, and I use that with like their little um. A- adhesive it's like a little like a a medium i guess that just like makes oh, yeah. it into like an, mm, like an lipstick. eyeliner yeah it would oh, make oh, an cool. eyeliner <clears throat> yeah and then you put it on yeah so yeah just you know and then your earrings oh yeah my earrings so cute they're so cute. Made, these. made these i made these Crelly has a little shop yes Crelly, what's i'm gonna shop do a called? little shameless find plug them. yes um it's called cositas and it's with a k We'll link it down. We'll link it in the in the description. Yes, it's yes. So but yeah, cute. I'm like I'm like really slowly starting to sell them. Um, mm-hmm. I've only done like a few little things, but yeah, show Sydney's. And then I made these for Sydney. They're so cute. They're perfect. I literally love them. And then I'm wearing my Hey Boo sweatshirt. Hey Yay, Boo. Yay, Hey Boo. That's good. I like it, guys. guys Very really Halloween cute. vibes. Love it. Good effort. We all really pulled it together. We did. You're we were- the only thing that's throwing me off is the nose ring. Oh, you're right. I can take that out right now. Oh, you can take it out easily. Yep. <laughs> How to, so you can just. Uh, hmm, very curious what a nose ring. They're Ready? so cute. Here it goes. Bye bye. Damn. Now you're Josh. <laughs> now I am Josh. Scary. You're right. I should have you taken are. that off immediately. Whatever. You should have some gauges. Oh, like the olden yeah. days. <sighs> Jeez. Josh still has holes because he pierced his own ears. Yeah. Well. <laughs> When mm-hmm. you're desperate, I don't think his parents were going to be taking him to Claire's. No, no. He'd keep that shit hidden until they eventually saw the giant gaping say, hole. <laughs> How do you keep an earring hidden? That's well, wild. he only like got the balls to do one of them. Oh. And then it was in the wrong spot and one was infected and messed up. So she ended up having to bring him to Claire's to get it fixed. fixed. And then, yeah. Nice. Good yep. for him. Yep. And Love then we, when he did the gauges, he moved way too quick. There's a certain, mm, yeah. you have to wait some time. Oh, yeah. But he was like, I want the big ones now. And like force him through and like rip part of his ear. That is Ugh. the most Josh thing I've ever heard of. <sighs> when know, Josh has an idea, he's like, I would like to execute the idea now. Immediately. Right fucking now. Yeah, he's an impulsive. I'm impulsive, man. <laughs> what can I say? Sorry, man. It's worked out Sometimes for me so Sometimes you just got to take risks. I feel that. Yeah. I don't like risks. I like to calculate and overthink 
a little too much but you know yeah john does yeah man john you do like to take your time yeah i like to really think of all think the of different outcomes. i don't like to take any time to no. think i like to just do right. immediately you know whenever i think their own though it's worked out for you it's it good. has worked out well for me yeah yeah. okay anyways uh so today we're gonna be uh starting off the app with some spooky stories yeah uh, are we gonna do our own spooky stories or the spooky stories we found first let's do the spooky stories we found for each other we're gonna tell each other little cute stories yeah, that are man. actually kind of creepy pretty, nothing pretty. like too true crime or anything like that because mm-hmm. we're trying to keep it light here on the set yeah, it's Halloween. But creepy stories yeah creepy halloween stories and then mm-hmm. we also have some paranormal shit because you if you didn't want to be an astronaut you'd want to be a ghost that's so, uh, or like, a ghost hunter a man, hunter you yeah, know, yeah yeah like yeah a, yeah, yeah a ghost like hunter uh, yeah sure man so we definitely uh i had the time got some own spooky stories that we've been through actually no on the real uh us in, like kendall and i and sydney have definitely experienced some stuff particularly in our old sorority house i really haven't experienced no? shit i mean no? you guys have i have and I didn't even I just live heard there. stories. I remember the stories pretty well because I made a whole little thing. I'll oh, have to yeah. remind you of that. But oh, we'll talk yeah. about that later. Yeah. I forgot. All so about I know that. like the legend. The legend. Pretty well. But I've never Sigma experienced Kappa. much myself. So. Yeah. Also, some exciting Halloween news. Higher Love Wellness, me and Josh's wellness brand, is doing a Halloween sale this weekend. You can get, what are the details, Sid? Um, so it's going to be 20% off site wide. Yep. 20%, baby. Yep. It's a good deal, so definitely check it out. No code. Do we have a code? We do have a code. The code is Halloween. Code in all is caps. Halloween, bitch. All caps. You heard it here first. So go check it out. Um, but anyway. That's let's... one thing that's not scary about this episode is the CBD products. That yeah. shit is good. Oh, it's amazing. It's I live by it. That's what's so nice having a product, like producing something that you truly love, is that you can use your own product oh, every yeah. day. I totally. use multiple of my products every single day. They're part of my routine. So it's, yeah. It's good I really shit. think you should check it out if you haven't so far. We've put a lot of work into perfecting our products. And we have a lot of new and improved versions of mm-hmm. things already out. Things that will be new and improved soon. We're taking everything up a level in the new year. So that it's very exciting. Is, that wax is some of my favorite wax. I yeah. love it so yeah, much. Yeah, we've really so got good. our wax yeah. down and we're, we're super excited about it. So yeah, check it out. There'll be a link below. All right, well, All right. I want to hear your story. Are we going to take a quick break yes. before we start and then we'll get into it? Absolutely, let's take a quick break. All right, man, quick break. Guys, we have a new sponsor on the sash that I'm so stoked to tell you about. Seriously, I got their products a few days ago and I'm genuinely obsessed with this brand, Rare Form. Rareform is so cool, it repurposes highway billboards into one-of-a-kind bags and accessories. So they're really, really sustainable, and they're such good quality. You would not think it comes from a billboard on a highway. Rareform recycles over 80% of all billboards in the country, you guys, from New York, LA, Nashville. They partner with companies all over the United States, and they collect nearly 500,000 pounds of billboard every single month. What really sucks is that billboards only have a four to six week lifespan. And then after that, they usually just get sent to the landfill and sit there for hundreds of years. But with rare form, they take them, they repurpose them into really, really unique bags, accessories, totes, you name it. Another thing that's great is that all of their products are completely unique. You'll never have the same bag as someone else because again, they're made from billboards. So each piece that they're using to make these bags are totally different from the other. Every product on their site is individually photographed. So what you see is exactly what you get. And they're really, really durable and well made. They're made of vinyl. So the bags are water resistant. They wear really well. They last a long time. And obviously billboards are meant to live outside. So these things are extremely durable, flexible, waterproof, you name it. Made from billboards and designed to fit your style. Go check them out at rareform.com slash sesh. That's rareform.com slash sesh. Find your one of a kind bag now. I really think you guys are going to like these. And with the holidays coming up, this is a very, very unique gift. So go check them out. Healthcare for women is unnecessarily complicated, guys. And that's why you need to check out the Pill Club. Life is stressful enough and access to healthcare just shouldn't be. But luckily, getting birth control is one less thing that you could have to worry about with the Pill Club because you'll never have to make a trip to the doctor or wait in line at the pharmacy for your birth control ever again because they provide access to care from the comfort of your home. The Pill Club is a birth control subscription prescribed by a medical professional and delivered straight to your door for free. The Pill Club carries over 120 FDA approved brands and most brands of birth control are actually free 
with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start as low as $9 per month without insurance. The Pill Club delivers birth control to your door for free, like I said, and it comes in discreet packaging, which is great. And what's really great is their licensed medical team is just a text away if you have any questions along the process. So skip the office visit and waiting in line at the pharmacy to get your birth control and join the club instead. Right now, when you go to thepillclub.com slash sesh, the Pill Club is offering a $10 donation to bedsider.org for every sesh listener who becomes a patient. Your donation will help low-income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. That's thepillclub.com slash sesh to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control. Remember, that's thepillclub.com slash sesh. You must use that link to make your donation. And we're back to spook things up a little bit here. <laughs> I would Spook them up. I would say put the fog machine on again, but I think we're getting <laughs> yeah, lung little, damage. A little toxic. <laughs> to be honest, it's like very <laughs> thick smoke. It's really weird. It ain't great. Um, yeah. Not great. That's a good idea. All right. Ready for your story? Yeah. I'm, I'm prepared to be spooked. Okay. This one is called the Koi Kendall family phone stalker. Ooh. This is creepy as fuck because I feel like it could really happen. So this takes place in Washington state where three families say they were the victim of a phone stalker who has still never been identified to this day. It's a complete mystery. It started in 2007 where 16 year old Courtney Koo Kendall, Kendall or Kai Kendall. I don't know exactly how you pronounce her last name began receiving texts from her friends asking why she had texted them a single word, quote, gay. So apparently her friends were like, yo, Courtney, why are you sending this like weird fucking text? And yeah. she was like, what are you talking about? Like, I definitely have never fucking sent that. And just said gay? It just said the words gay, like the word gay. Weird. Yeah, so weird. So anyways, Courtney brushed it off and didn't really think much of it. And thought it was just kind of like a stupid prank, like someone got a hold of her phone or somehow like it transferred over to them, but said it was from her. But of course, this got much creepier, can never be that simple. Long, Not long after her friends received that message from Courtney, all of her friends and family started receiving threatening texts and phone calls from an unknown number. And they referenced this person as restricted because it was always, uh, that's how it always appeared on caller ID. Do you ever get those calls when it's like restricted number? Yeah. Yeah. It always kind of like weirds me out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So star 69, baby. Star six, seven. Oh, you pervert. Get, Wait. get your gutter out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> star 69, Sorry, man. baby. You know how it is as a dude, your mind's just always in the gutter, the gutter, you know? I wish it was star 69. <laughs> I used to make my prank calls on Star 69. No wonder it never worked. I loved making prank calls back in the day. I wonder if that shit still works. All right. Anyways, so restricted. Let's call them restricted because that's what their name was on their phone, I guess. Uh, Started harassing them with death threats, R-word threats, and even threatened to kill their pets, which is so crazy. Random fucking numbers calling all of your family members threatening to do this shit. So the family was also being... Uh, watched around the clock and restricted even started calling their landline so their home phone number they also got a hold of that Mm -mm. Mm -mm. and an attempt to stop the harassment everyone affected changed their phone numbers they were switching phones like they tried to do everything they could to get this person to stop calling them they would take their turn their phones off they would go to new uh accounts they would just they were they were literally trying everything but nothing seemed to work so this person had some type of inside or intel on them i don't know and something against them personally oh yeah yeah it wasn't like any targeting them exactly yeah so things started to look bad for courtney when the police traced the messages back to her phone but it seemed like her phone could text and make calls even when the phone was turned off because people were like dude it's literally coming from your phone like what like stop with the prank and she was like even yeah even when the phone was off though this was happening so people think that her phone was like masked or something like someone was using her number. Um, anyways, so the family met the, with the police. They talked to them. They were kind of like, Courtney, get your shit together. And she was like, dude, it literally wasn't me. But when they came home, the family came back after talking to the police and they noticed they had a voicemail and it was a recording of the conversation the family had with the police. What? Yeah. Like, and it was it a phone conversation with the police? No, they went to the police station. We're talking so with them. So it's like someone in the police department, maybe? I don't know. Or people how will was, then, yeah, Courtney's parents were like, dude, you definitely have something to do with it. 
Whoa. And so they took her phone away, but it was still happening. So she didn't even have her fucking phone and her oh. phone was still making calls, making texts, and then, yeah, sending a recording Mm-mm-mm. of their conversation Mm-mm-mm. to their landline. So it's not Courtney. It ain't Courtney. So then they started getting more and more intense. In addition to listening to everything, it seemed like Restricted was able to see the family as well because they started making comments on the clothes the family was wearing. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> they That's got like sec- paranormal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's scary. They got a security system keypad for their home and Restricted called them telling them that they knew the passcode to this security system. Holy shit. What a nightmare. I know. Yeah, honestly, fucking terrible. Like, they were scared shitless because what the fuck? And the cops were completely baffled. They had no idea what was going on. It was as if the perpetrator was, like, invisible because Courtney didn't have her phone. It's still coming from Courtney's phone. There's no way they could trace it. They were trying everything. They had no idea where this was coming from. And to this day, the mystery trailed off, and there have never been any follow-ups or arrests, people of interest, absolutely nothing. And, the, and it just all stopped one day? I don't know if it completely stopped. I don't know if they, like, stopped talking about it. It's fucking crazy. But, yeah, I guess it was, like, never really confirmed. And uh, some oh, sources say so that the FBI creepy. had gotten involved. And maybe that's why, like, the calls had stopped or, like, we stopped hearing about it. But it's one of those stories where, you know, it's hard to get, like, yeah. the most up-to-date. It's yeah, not like exactly. there's journalists no. covering it. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. absolutely not. Wow, that's um, creepy and but yeah, interesting. And they still don't know if it was just one stalker or multiple people because like it could have been a whole group for all they know. Damn. Yeah, and I guess this one time they got a recording of a voicemail from Restricted. They, the restriction number left mm-hmm. a voicemail, but all it sounded was, quote, throaty juvenile rasps stolen from bad horror movies is what they described it as. Ew. I know. And yeah, people still think it was Courtney who pulled it off. And she was like, I would why, not fucking would harass my own that? family. Yeah. And for what? Yeah, exactly. Like, go down that far to where you're scaring the shit ever. And yeah. I guess her mom came out and was like, no, dude, my kid wouldn't do that. No. Why? Yeah. So. Wow, that's creepy. I know. Yeah. Another theory is that Restricted gained access to their phones through a virus, maybe. A so, virus? So, yeah, my guess is that someone was, like, some type of hacker was able mm. to... But why were they going after them specifically yeah, so hard? Exactly. That's what I think is weird. That's terrifying. Maybe they just didn't want to do any more, you know, publicity about yeah, it because exactly. it's so scary. Who knows? I have no idea what happened. Wow. But yeah. But that's the latest on it? It's creepy yeah. as fuck. Wow. I think the last was like the FBI might have gotten involved yeah. and scared them off or, you know what I mean? Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it was 2007 too. And like, I feel yeah, like that was like, a while the, ago. like the beginning mm. of like, Self. like, yeah. It, yeah. And like, like hacking and like mirroring and stuff i feel like right. that's you know like the beginning of that i don't know but yeah it's getting even it's more freaky. freaky now especially since oh, then sure. you know with oh. people hacking into ring doorbells and people's oh, garages yeah. and cars or yeah. people's like like laptop camera Ooh, oh yeah that's scary yeah, to that's, me fuck that shit. yeah one time in college i was taking this course it was like an english course but it had like had a theme of social media so we were talking about how just social media and like our ca- how there's cameras in front of us all over the place and there was this one girl who had this stalker watching through her laptop this is a true story watching through her laptop um camera and would basically learn to know her daily routine based on like when she was on the laptop and like she would she would like watch tv while she was like showering or or watch you know a movie on her laptop was like yep and they basically were able to stalk her they found her ended up killing her really yep oh my god i've heard stories like that but never of anyone actually being killed holy shit yeah so definitely get little covers on your laptop people like that is not a joke it's i know it's really scary. it's so true i gotta have one of my i used to always have it on my laptop but i never thought to put one on my ipad but i guess this yeah. bitch should then have i'm one like too. should you have it on your phone probably probably everything with a camera I don't. yeah god. so anyways it's getting that's scary great. especially with the zuck's new ideas yeah what the fuck i don't know about that i don't know about that it looks kind of cool, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I mean yeah, but it's like, <sighs> yeah, exactly. Like, we're gonna really lose track of reality. I feel. Like oh, absolutely. It's gonna get bad. Oh, it's gonna get terrible. Okay, absolutely. well, I have a scary story for you. All right, that's let's gonna hear creep it. you out. Okay, so you are in the market for a new house. Yeah, for yeah. a new house eventually. Yeah. Let's say you bought that new house and it was infested with something. What would be the last thing that you would want your house to be infested with? Mm, maggots <laughs> oh yeah you hate maggots <laughs> or moths maggots would be really bad yeah 
Maggots are like moths. moth Ew. infected. Ugh, okay. Disgusting. Well, let me tell you about the Ugh. sessions and their home buying experience. Sessions. Okay. <laughs> so ban, uh, ban, <laughs> ban, Ben and Amber <laughs> sessions. <laughs> Thought that they were moving into their dream home. They were very excited when they Aww. bought this five bedroom house with some land in rural Idaho Aww. in the countryside. Nice. Just real nice. In a cornfield. Um, yep. <laughs> was that on camera? <laughs> she just drooled everybody. <laughs> Amazing. Like really bad. I don't think John would ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not as disgusting as I am. The... The sourness to this little candy apple made really me like your saliva sl- glands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, keep going. Okay, so they were very excited for this house because they wanted to grow their family there and raise them in a, a nice, you know, quiet, safe little area. Amber was actually pregnant at the time with their third child. Mm, so they were, you know, they really needed this to be their dream home, their forever home. Mm-hmm. But that dream quickly turned into a nightmare when they realized that their home was infested with hundreds and hundreds of garter snakes yeah baby snakes snakes on a plane snakes in a house i had one snake in a house and it was a lot i like snakes but like not in my house i know i think they're cool too especially hundreds of them hundreds of anything is freaky yeah (laughs) and luckily a garter snake it's not the it's not like they're anaconda. Yeah, they're not going to kill them. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's it's not that bad, but we're talking hundreds and hundreds of these motherfuckers, right? Wait, how did they, like, you think that you would notice that when you're, like, touring the house? Like, oh, I know. maybe it was, like, sight well, unseen. snakes hide. Like, True. and then they come out more when they, like, it gets darker, it's Ew. more comfortable. Oh, so the God. ground of their surrounding home also appeared to move because it was so thick with snakes. Ooh. Ew, like they could the see the, the land moving. The oh snakes God, would slither disgusting. under their home siding, under the porch, and hundreds of snakes piled up on top of each other. Hundreds, dude. Why Full infestation. Fuck? Like out of control breeding here. God, At I night. Need some birth control up in this bitch. Yeah, Get, seriously. Go to the pill club. Snake birth control for sure. Disgusting. Start passing them out to the snakes. Um, but anyway, they would lie awake and listen to the sound of these snither- slithering Ooh. snakes inside of the walls. And Ben said <gasps> that it was like living in a horror movie. They could hear it while they were sleeping. And they have two kids, plus she's pregnant. Dude, I can imagine the sound of like in your mm-hmm. walls, like constant just like movements. And plus they like <gasps> saw them out and about too. So their family, as soon as they realized this, they started eating out of the house because... Oh, they're going to say eating them. I was like, no. <laughs> like, quite get rid of the snakes and eat snacks. them. We're only eating snakes for the next month. <laughs> no, they rarely ate at home because their water well carried the foul musk of this that snakes release in order to warn off that. predators. Oh, shit. You didn't know that? They have no. like a nasty smell. Like little skunks. So their water well had that, so they couldn't even like Ew. make food at home or drink the water at their home, so they had to eat out of the house at all times. Plus, it's just disgusting. What the hell? You're trying to These eat. people have house insurance? I, I don't know, man. Better so every day farm. before Amber and their two young sons would get out of bed... Ben would do a morning sweep of the house to make sure that no snakes had made it inside the house mm. or like outside, like, yeah, like we're in just, the living room. Right. They're not just like, they're like at least in the walls are contained. TV. <laughs> Ew. But sometimes, especially over time, more and more snakes started to get into the house and be just cruising around. So one like day, tweaking. So yeah, I know. you hate snakes, huh? Said, oh my God, this sounds absolutely awful. I think they're disgusting. I'm sorry. I have no, no it's, I have it's all good. literally hate them. I really, like I don't know snakes, why they're but... still living there. Like, why I are they know. staying yeah. there for yeah. so long? I would be like, I know. Fucking I'd be in here. a hotel and getting a lawyer or something. Oh, <laughs> but one day, Amber, who's pregnant with her third child, was in the laundry room and she's just doing her laundry. And then she suddenly almost stepped on a snake. And she jumped up onto the counter and it scared <gasps> her so bad. And because she was so far along in her pregnancy, she was worried that she was miscarried by being in the house oh, because no. the snakes were pop, starting to pop out and scare her. So at oh, the peak no. of the infestations, while the sessions lived there, Ben said that he killed one time 42 snakes in one day. And that was the day that he decided he couldn't fucking take it anymore. And the snakes had one. They could keep that fucking house. They are out. 
42 snakes in one day in he killed? one day, once they started getting into the actual house. Okay, finally, and I think he like, yeah. st- he, like there was obviously like more, but he just stopped at 42. He's like, fuck this. Like, yeah, the snakes, yeah. he fucking won. Yeah, yeah cause there was way, like way more snakes than he oh could ever kill. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Call fucking Terminex or whatever we, that one. I don't know if they can even <laughs> handle Ter- that. <laughs> Germax, Terminex. Germex? Germ, I don't know what's the fucking, whatever, it doesn't matter. Call an exterminator. <laughs> Yeah, or call someone who can, like, get them and move them or something. Well, maybe they, like, weren't able to, to leave or something. I just would... I would go knock on my neighbor's door and be like, listen. <laughs> it's real bad on It's there. really tonight. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so God. they were ready at this point to obviously get the fuck out of this house for good. But they were tied up because they had signed a document that did note the snake infestation. And they didn't notice it in the original document. But it was just like, hey, no... Mm-hmm. like little by the way there's like a whole hundreds yeah, of snakes living like, in there uh, yeah uh, they just kind of slipped that in the fine print but they say that the real estate agent assured them that since the snakes so they actually did know about it the agent yeah, actually but, told them that since the snakes were just a story invented by the last own it, owners oh. to leave their mortgage so they were the, under the impression it was just kind of like so a they really didn't think thing. it was there yeah like, but it clearly wasn't a myth it was real. Oh the sessions God. were living this nightmare every day, and it seemed impossible for them at this point to get rid of this house. And Amber said living in this house was so stressful, it felt like living in, quote, Satan's lair. How Sounds worse than Satan's lair. Scary. Oh my gosh, I would be terrified. Wow. So, neighbors and other residents started just like taking pictures of the house out from the front because there were so many on the porch and the ground. Ew. That they were just recording the snake infestation. Dude, it and probably everyone smelled bad too. But yeah. there were like snakes dying, rotting and shit. Yep. And then soon everyone in the area knew the house as the snake house. They're like, oh, you're from the snake house. So like the freaks in the neighborhood that no one wants to hang out with. Yeah, they were, were pretty freaked out. So the sessions ended up having to file for bankruptcy. It's pretty sad. Oh, damn. The house was foreclosed on. Yeah. I- and they only lived in it for three months. They could not take it wow, another day. They were willing to just months. take the loss. So the house was on the market for a short, short time, but was never sold. And it was last. it's last known to be owned by Chase. Yeah. As of December 2010. Wow. But I don't know. It could Who have changed knows? by then. Wow. This was on an episode of Infestation or <gasps> Infested on Animal Planet. Oh, really? Yep. So if you'd like to see the ep, you can see it for yourself. This oh, is a real story. Wonderful. I don't think I'll ever need to see that in my life. Thank you so much. Right? I, I, I just have a just picture in my many. mind. I have too a many. picture in my mind. Oh, I'm sure it's much worse than we're even picturing. But Ben has been diagnosed with snake related PTSD. And he's so afraid of the house that he thinks it should just be condemned. Um. Yeah, I could totally see that. Mm-hmm. That is like terrible. It's I mean, like, like ruined your life. Of, I mean, it's some freak thing. How often do you hear of an right. infestation like that? Not like that. It's almost like what is drawing all these snakes there? Yeah, why <laughs> there? Know. And not in like the why neighbors are they reproducing yard? so easily too? Where the know? next one was like, get your fucking snake off my lawn. <laughs> 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 <Tear house. laughs> but Amber also still experiences frequent nightmares or she did as of you know, 2010 when this all happened. Damn. But the house was most likely built on a winter snake sanctuary where snakes gather in large numbers to hibernate. hibernate. What? That's what they think. That's a thing? I had no, never heard well, of I it before. Say, yeah, yeah. Seasons. I was going to say, yeah, because like sometimes they'll like, they will like, like all bunch up together so that they can stay warm and stuff and like they'll hibernate yeah. for months and they usually go to like one central location, which happens to be this fucking house. Damn. That's so scary. But, so there's actually a news clip that we can check out real fast. Oh, only a minute long. Okay, great. Let's do it. What started out as a dream house for Ben and Amber Sessions quickly turned into a nightmare. Their five-bedroom home purchased for $180,000, but filled with something they didn't think would be a problem. Garter snakes. They found a few at first, but then so many, they could even taste them in their tap water. I t- tasted it, and it tastes. I had touched and dealt with enough snakes by then that... It, the water tasted just like the snakes taste. But even worse, they signed paperwork when they bought the house acknowledging that there were snakes there. But they didn't think there would be so many. And when they couldn't get rid of them, they declared bankruptcy. Seven different lawyers throughout all of Idaho. Their best mention to us is, well, where they got you on the paperwork, you need to just file bankruptcy. But they refused to give up without a fight. The previous owners that had walked away from that house, they, they had sealed up pretty good, but 
We, you know, after we found that in the house, I went around and tried to seal all I could. They ended up on the Animal Planet Network. You know, when we realized that it was a really big problem, we we kind of wish we would have started taking pictures from day one or keeping the snakes, you know, just because I don't know. I, I hadn't lived there. I don't know if I would believe somebody telling me that. The home is now owned by the bank and the price keeps going down under $110,000 in January. The sessions are trying to rebound and worry that an unsuspecting buyer could do what they did. The locals have a name for the place. They call it the Snake House. What do you think? Would you, know you rather? What's the most surprising thing of all that is that they had a five bedroom house for one hundred eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> <Yeah, I mean, laughs> That's why they were so happy. They thought they got to steal the deal. <laughs> yeah, it was, a deal. It was like that's... over ten years ago, though. Shit's the market's out of control now. Yeah, that's Whoa, that's, that's true. Nice house. <laughs> like maybe it was worth it. No, that's not worth it. That's fucked. So would you go for snakes, maggots, or moths if you had to pick one? I would go snakes. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ugh. I would go with fucking moths and just get one of those electric fly swatters that I love. I have fun. At least snakes aren't flying at your face. Yeah. I can't. I ugh, I would still do snakes. That looks scary, though. I mean, I wouldn't be thrilled. That's yeah. Not I'd be worried about me. my pets, my dogs, my cats, I'd my rabs, about- my rabbits. Yeah. Honestly, your rabbit, your cats would be fine. They'd probably like eat the snakes. That's true. The cats would probably fuck the snakes up. In fact, Meatball sometimes likes to go under the porch yeah. and hang out with the snakes. I was going to say, Meatball would fuck up a snake. Yeah. I think she I think she would. Yeah. She's like, oh, please, bitch. She doesn't oh, give a psh- shit singles to shit no. wow anyways that is going to make me sleep so good tonight uh yeah happy halloween thought you would enjoy that one holy shit i know that would really creep me out damn that's shit. so many fucking the whole thing when they were like yeah the ground is now moving i was like that is some shit that should be illegal like they need to burn that place down i'm sorry there's no getting rid of that no or maybe you just like let it there's let a lot snakes of habit overtake. yeah yeah let them have a nice house. <laughs> That's nice a nice house. house. Mm. Five bedroom house for a snake. I, mean, I think they pretty much deserved it. They really like conquered that thing. They're like, come on, motherfucker, teamwork. <laughs> wow. Okay. Anyways. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, go to one hour ad break. And then we're going to talk about our own ghost stories. All right. One of my constant battles is the fact that I would like to eat healthier, but I don't like foods that taste gross. Like I can't just power through it. I love food so much. It's like a comfort to me. I need food that tastes good. And when it comes to healthy food that tastes good, Saqqara is where it's at. Saqqara is a nutrition company that focuses on overall wellness, starting with what you eat. Their organic, ready-to-eat meals are made with powerful plant-based ingredients and are designed to minimize your sugar cravings, boost your energy, improve your digestion, and get your skin glowing. They always say that it's what you eat is the thing that really matters for your skin and for your energy level as well. And I would have to agree with that, honestly. I do find myself having uh, more energy when I actually eat healthy and eat whole foods rather than just eating box mac and cheese all the time, you know? Sakara's chef-crafted breakfasts, lunches, and dinners are backed by cutting-edge nutrition science to boost your health and stoke your glow, baby. And it's delivered fresh to your door anywhere in the United States. And what's really cool about Sakara is they don't have just plant-rich meals. They also have daily wellness essentials like supplements and herbal teas to support your nutrition. Experience their best-selling Metabolism Super Powder and Metabolism Super Bar to control sugar cravings, reduce bloating, boost energy, and reduce fatigue. Sakara has received rave reviews from Vogue, Goop, The New York Times, and more. So right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash sesh podcast or enter code sesh at checkout. That's sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash sesh podcast to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash sesh podcast. And our last but certainly not least sponsor of the day is Tushy, you guys. I love Tushy. You've heard me talk about it many a times. It is the best. And if you don't have a Tushy on your pot, you need to get one. Tushy is a modern bidet company that washes away even the messiest of poops, leaving you with a better clean than toilet paper, guys. So we all know that coffee is delicious. Cold brew is amazing, but it runs right through you, doesn't it? Or at least it runs right through me, honestly. And things can get a little wild down there. But with Tushy, no need to worry. It has helped my butthole stay nice and clean, even through the coffee days. Is your butt clean enough to sit on the couch naked? No? Well, then you need to get a Tushy, the modern bidet that attaches directly to your toilet in under 10 minutes. Guys, think about it. If you had poop on any other part of your body, would you just wipe it off? No, the fuck you would not. You would wash it off. So why don't we wash our buttholes when there's poop on them? Exactly. (laughs) Case closed. (laughs) So stop wiping and start washing with Tushy. 
There's no electricity or plumbing, and Tushy also reduces your toilet paper use by 80%, which saves you money, and it's very eco-friendly and stylish as well. And they also have a full product line to help you make the restroom the best room, including a Tushy Ottoman, the sleekest toilet stool designed to help you poop at 100% 100% of the time, and the new Tushy Brush, folks, the only toilet brush with disposable scrubbing pads so you can use a clean brush every single time. And that's not all. They've got a ton of products on there. So head over, start washing with a Tushy bidet for a better clean. Go to hellotushy.com slash sesh to get 10% off plus free shipping. That's a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash sesh for 10% off. And after you install your Tushies, I would like to see them. (laughs) (laughs) okay not that kind of tushy but you know what i mean so after you install it show it off and tag us and hello tushy at hello tushy on instagram so i know it's kind of disappointing but i truly don't have that many paranormal experiences like i've had a few and i've shared what i have you know i had that one experience in my old apartment Mm -hmm. where i got this creepy scratch down my chest i still have no idea how the fuck i got that that was weird i saw this creepy figure in the middle of the night i'm convinced that my old apartment was haunted but yeah not much more than that and then the house that we're living in right now everyone is convinced is haunted i mean clearly the studio is haunted if you're a watcher of our content you know we've got something the fuck is up in here something is for sure up you guys the weirdest shit pops off all the time constantly like random sound boards random cuts oh the other day this one time i don't even know if we told this on the sesh but a few like maybe a month or two ago we we're filming mile higher and all of a sudden out of all three of our headphones makes this like train sound it literally it was, was like, like honk, honk. Honk. it was so loud and we were like what the fuck and all three of us were like um okay and then we and just that's not even what we have in our soundboards. no so. we don't even have that it sounded like a literal fucking train it was the weirdest yeah, sound we all heard it and then we I, I went to edit it and it wasn't there in post so i'm like okay yep. <laughs> that's great so yep. then what the so fuck we just was heard that? it but all three of us did yeah and in post you can see all three of us well it didn't make the, the actual final version but when i was editing it it was like all three of us were like what the fuck and like freaked out and there was nothing there yeah, it's happened so many times. There's so many examples in this studio. Like, what was it? Last episode we were recording, my there phone just flew, flew off, off of there. The fireplace. Like, yeah, literally we have a flew off fireplace of it. over here and it just like ejected itself off by itself. No one's even near there. There's no air. I just, I don't even know. The soundboard goes off all it's the time. It's very, honestly, it creeps me out. Like, sometimes it scares me to talk about it because I feel like it's like, it's gonna be like and, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, you like this bitch? Let's scare you more. Accepted. Um, but yeah, we've definitely had some interesting things happen with our house. Like, when we first moved in, I told this on Mile Higher last week, but we had a TV up on our mantle and we had it there for like two weeks the first two weeks we were living there but we didn't like actually anchor it to the wall and in the middle of the night like three in the morning the thing comes flying down with force onto the ground just smashes down onto the ground and that thing was it wasn't like barely up there i mean there was plenty of space for this tv to stand for it that it was up there just chilling fine and it wasn't even on or anything the the cats when we locked the cats out of the room so it wasn't them like at night they're always out of the room um so yeah that was really weird that's like the really only paranormal thing i've experienced in this house we've had some like creepy sounds here and there but corelli stayed at our house Mm -hmm. you experienced some of that yeah so i told this on the last episode of mile higher as well um i was house sitting for you what like two months ago now yeah and um i was this is like maybe like the second day i was house sitting and um what time of day was it but i'm just trying it to... was like full like full daytime like okay, it, was, it was i don't know yeah it was, i don't know what time it was but it was like day, it was like middle of day yeah okay and um i'm hanging out in the bedroom and i'm just like i don't know like walking around i don't know i'm just house sitting i don't know what do you do when yeah. you house it you know what i mean chilling. just chilling yeah and um the dogs are with me in the bedroom um the cats were obviously cats so they're wherever they are I heard the the front door open and it has a very specific, like your door has a very mm-hmm. specific sound. Yeah. I heard the creep, like the creak, creaks. Mm-hmm. it creak. And then there's like, like when the door sweeps on the floor, I heard that. And like, that's what kind of, you know, alerted me. And I thought it was you, Janelle. Like I honestly thought you were, you came, you came over to hang out with me or something. Well, Cause everyone <laughs> knows my front door code. So sometimes people do you. just randomly walk in. I would tell you if I was coming over cause I'd be freaked yeah. out if I, like, yeah. I wouldn't want to scare you. Oh right, God. right. And like, I'm, and I lock all the doors. Yeah, I same. made sure like all, like all your doors were locked. Like I'm very paranoid being by myself, mm-hmm. um, especially in like a, you know, like a big, Random. like bigger than my apartment. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I thought it was you and I went out there and like, I, you know, like I went out there kind of like, I'm like, hi, I was, I was like, like, I was expecting it to be like, Hey, Janelle, like what's up? And yeah, the door oh was closed God. and the door was locked. Um, both of them were locked. The main one and the little one were locked. 
And yeah, and I just heard the door open and I went out there and the dogs were behind me. So I know it wasn't them. Hell no. Yeah. Yeah. And like when Joel has stayed here, he's heard all types of creepy shit. He said one night randomly he heard country music coming from our garage. Yeah. He told me that a few days. He's like, yeah, I was outside. He said it was really late, if I'm remembering this correctly. And he said he was really late and he walked inside and he was going upstairs and he heard country music in the garage. And he like <laughs> opened it and there was nothing there. Garage doors were closed. Like mm-mm, didn't mm-mm, see it was mm-mm. he was like old, like twangy music, like old ass country music. That is so creepy. I don't know what I would do if something like that happened when I was I was home alone. Like I would not, shit luckily myself. they must know I'm scared because they leave me the fuck alone. I was saying, and I've never I've never had any like not really any like paranormal yeah. experiences. So like that yeah. was like one of the most like obvious ones i guess you can say because mm-hmm. yeah. like i've i don't know like i literally heard your i heard your front door open mm-hmm. like and i i literally thought it was you you know like i literally thought you were coming you came over oh and like God, I, like, so and it, like after i thought about it because i was like my first thought after i thought about it i was like wait janelle just like she would you, you texted me that one time you know what i mean yeah yeah. So yeah. You, would te- you would let me know if you were on your way yeah yeah oh, it was yeah, weird I would never walk in yeah <gasps> You know, yeah. when I had all Here that p- paranormal stuff happening in my apartment, I was convinced something was happening in there. And some someone left a comment just saying like this prayer that you can say. I mean, prayer loosely, yeah. like a, something you can say out loud yeah. that basically I acknowledge your present spirit. It's OK for you to be here as long as you do not scare me because I am afraid and I don't want to see you because it scares me. And I did it and it fucking worked immediately. And I don't seem to have scary moments like that anymore. And I say that I've said that prayer, whatever, multiple times in here, yeah. in oh, the house. Yeah. Like if I ever start feeling creeped out, like whoever it is, because you never know, it could be your own ancestors that are just hanging yeah. out around. Right. Um, or it could be something really fucking worse. So, dude, you I need to set the boundary. Thing. Well, bro, no offense, but I mean, you talk about like hella scary shit on your podcast. I know they're, so. they're naturally attracted to me, and I'm just trying to have a paranormal experience, honestly. I'm like, bring it on. I know, you're really Scare into the that fuck shit. Of me. What were you going to say, Sid? I was going to say I do the same exact thing. Like when I go home to my apartment, if it's, I'm by myself, I don't even hear anything, but I'm like, hey, I'm here. I'm always yep. like, I don't know who I'm talking to, but yeah, I, I'm trying to make too. peace. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> set the set peace. Yeah. Acknowledge their presence. You can chill here. Just I don't want to see it because it scares me. No offense. <laughs> right. Just a little baby. They're and a little baby. They, they ex- Sometimes they respect it. It's worked well for me. So I don't know who wrote that comment, but thank you. <laughs> it's helped me a lot. There have been times in the new office where I'm there late by myself and it's like as soon as the like it starts getting dark, mm-hmm. it like starts getting like weird sounds. Like Ooh. there have been times where I have been 100% convinced that the front door is opening that someone's like, because you know really? when you walk in that yeah. sound like you can hear yeah. your feet very well. And that, a tile in the front. Yeah. No, I was at the office late last night and I, because like during, like we're quiet during the day anyway you know what i mean so we yeah. hear those like little like creaks and creaks, like yeah creaks mm-hmm. at the day and you're right i was there till like seven or eight last night and i just heard like way more there are so many I, sounds yeah. but it's was, still weird because i'm like we're not like screaming during the day when people are there no that's what yeah, i mean it's not yeah. that loud no yeah. that's what i mean like and we hear like the like the like the air coming on yeah. or whatever you know what i mean and but maybe when you do hear another sound during the day your, your like, brain oh, just thinks it's something. yeah yeah so you but don't there have been at it. least three times where i'm like oh someone's coming in the front door and i always am like a little like uh, mm-hmm. to, i'm like mm-hmm. a little weirded out to turn the corner and no one's ever there so now i've started locking the door and because I just when I'm by myself, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> there's no reason know. for the door to be unlocked. No. <laughs> so I lock it and then I still hear the sounds. But like I it kind of gives me peace of mind. I'm like, well, the door is locked. But there. Yeah. Like I'm like, I swear to God, I hear like the door open and I'm, I'm just like waiting for someone to be out there. And apparently someone came in and used our bathroom one time. <laughs> some like random maintenance or like lawn care worker. Yeah. I don't even know. That was so weird. We found this bag of like a little Ziploc bag of makeup and no, some I think that's like, contacts. I think that's Josh's mom. <laughs> oh, we did figure out that was Josh's <laughs> yeah, we, mom. We thought someone, oh, no, that someone, was, random someone did use the bathroom. Someone did use the bathroom. <laughs> That's two different that makeup was that makeup was a, was a mystery though for a oh, while. Yeah, I think it mystery. is Josh's mom's. Yeah, but yes, people have come in and used the bathroom randomly. That's so weird. You know, I don't know. I feel like everyone though, growing up, if you ever stayed home alone, you hear shit in your house. Like when you're alone, yes. you just are gonna hear noises and yeah. get scared. At like, I was constantly terrified, terrified, like heart racing, sweating thinking like someone's breaking in my house right now and I'm going to die. Same. And then my trick became, my mom would tell me, if you ever feel like scared or something bad's going on outside, just take a walk outside and just take a deep breath of air. 
And it actually works really well, dude. Oh, I would okay. go outside and then I'd be like, oh, like just, just hearing outside. the quietness of my neighbor's house and just seeing that it was all okay. And I'd feel completely better. I'd go stand outside in the dark because it was less scary than oh being in the house. <laughs> and it would make me feel better. And I still do it that sometimes. That is true because it kind of makes you feel normal. Like, oh, everyone's just in their house. Yeah. Like, no one else is being creepy right now. Like creeped out. Yeah, you know? exactly. Unless, mm-mm. Yeah, maybe it's, it's not as good advice. No, my anxiety would not let me go outside and look around the house. It's so seriously he's looking at me from a window. No, <laughs> I don't know why it would work so well. I'd, I'd instantly be like, "Oh, everything's fine out here, man. I'm good." And I would go back good. inside and chill and watch my Nickelodeon. I'll be good. No complaints. I was terrified to be alone um, when I was younger. Like, still oh my God, I hated it. Even for a long time, actually, I kind of I've gotten over it a little bit now. Like, mm-hmm. I can sleep alone. If, which doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I'm not, I used to be like, well, I'm not getting sleep tonight. I'm going to be fucking paranoid. I'd like beg someone to come over, go to yeah. someone's house. That I'm doesn't really still bother that me way. anymore, but I do not sleep alone. <laughs> I will not stay the night by myself. I will, not do I will bring Janelle or Sydney or someone will come stay the night with me. If Josh is gone, because I hate it. <laughs> you got <laughs> terrified. Pets. You got two dogs. They're yeah. like guard dogs. That's true. The guard, they do make me feel really safe. Yeah. They're not letting anything come through, but still I get scared. Lucy would fuck some people up yeah she oh yeah Oakley, oh especially Oakley could like oh, i'm sure oh both of them could do because lucy's like smaller but she's fucking a lot more like yeah i'll kill you if needed yeah she's, she's yeah. wonderful and so but yeah she's a lot more like mm-hmm. protective i feel like oh more like dee, dee, dee. yeah <laughs> she definitely is so anyways yeah i feel like being by yourself isn't great but i don't know i feel like ghosts aren't more likely to attack you if you're by yourself but it's definitely creepy being by yourself at night. I don't know. I feel like that'll never, I'll like never fully get over that. It's always a little creepy. Anyways. Okay. Speaking of really, really creepy and very uh, honestly like chilling, we have this old, well, it's a true story. Like it really Mm -hmm. did happen in our sorority house back in the eighties, I believe. Yeah. There's multiple stories about our, the sorority that we were in in college, very small sorority house probably small. did not meet fire code to be honest like well we, we were pushing it a lot of the time the thing was small it is old it's from the 1800s it used to be a tuberculosis hospital so that's where the haunting begins many people have passed away in that house mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. um and a lot of children it was mostly children yes, in that hospital lots of kids but then yeah they would put you know four girls in a bunk bunk room mm-hmm. and sydney actually lived there so she can give first-hand experience yep. me and janelle we're yeah. not into that. No, so we, not, we said no to that. No. What was it like, Sid, living in that house? I mean, I I honestly had a blast. But well, yeah. there were some very scary times. And all the bedrooms had numbers on them. And yes. they never took them down, like, from the hospital, I believe. Yes. And yep. um, one thing, real quick, with the kids. I know mm-hmm. that that's true. Because at night, the pipes. The pipes. <laughs> it would sound like someone's trying to like make a song it didn't just like sound like cracking yeah it literally was like someone like hitting it and then changing and it was like that little kid yeah there was a story about a kid that lived in one of the basement rooms right yes. yeah the room that you lived in downstairs yes. there was a little boy who was said to have lived there of course we like it's not like we yeah. know his name and there's a historical record of this <laughs> right, but right, this right, has right. been told to us by older girls for yeah. years um, that there was this little boy who was into drumming and he would have little drumsticks and p- play the drums on the pipes. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you can say that you can still hear it, but there would be, always be like a big debate in the house. Like a lot of girls would be like, no guys, that's the pipes expanding right. in the winter. So, well, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but I don't yeah, know. I don't you, know. But I it happened heard it, all year. So I and was you like, heard it every night. Oh yeah. And, and it, it sounds like, like an actual song? like beat and stuff. What was the beat? Remember? Oh no, I I don't remember. It just it would be so annoying because we'd be watching like our Netflix in our beds, and I'm like, dude. At first, we thought it was people like stepping upstairs, yeah. but then we go upstairs and we no one. That's so, so creepy. Yeah, just wait. There's some scary stuff. Yeah, there was many of a scary story. Um, the yes. big one. This happened in like you said the 80s. There was. And this is true. Yes, this is. I true mean, story. that this happened. I don't know. Correct. How true everything else around it is. Right. Right. This girl, who was a member of our sorority back in the 80s, apparently went on a date and she left the house in her little outfit and everything and went on this date and then came home. Mm-hmm. I thought about her 11. I always had heard yeah, she came like home that. late and girls asked her how her date was and she didn't say anything to anyone and just silently walked up the stairs and got in her bed and the way that our house is designed is like right when you walk in the staircase is like right there and then there's like a living room so Mm -hmm. i believe that people were hanging out in the living room and the girl walked into the through the front door and just like went right upstairs and was 
But you can see that front door area from yeah, the kitchen from the and ki the living room right. space. So plenty of people probably saw her. They said they saw her come in. Yeah. That she went to bed. And I guess they were like, hey, how's your date? And it, she was yeah. like, kind of like, not grumpy, but like kind of upset, they said. And like some, they could tell something was wrong. Didn't seem like wanting to talk, talk about and it. And went they, to bed. Yeah. They thought we were like, uh -huh. oh, probably didn't go well or whatever. So next morning, the police come to the house, yeah. I believe the story goes, and said that this girl actually died in a car accident that night on her date. Yeah. They're like, does so-and-so live here? And they're like, oh, yeah, she came home. Yeah, and she's upstairs. And they went upstairs, and sure enough, she never came home. Her bed was unmade. Her stuff was still there. And, yeah. Yep. And she, she passed had away. died that night. So they keep her pin. Like, we have badges. Yeah. For a sorority and they kept it like on display in the house with a picture of her mm -hmm. in this one case mm -hmm. and so we'd like always talk about her but then yeah she's one of the many spirits that is said to be haunting the house mm -hmm. and <laughs> it's funny when we back when we were in school when i was still doing youtube but like kind of keeping it secret i started making <laughs> video secret. stuff for the sorority like i would help put together little music videos of us or there was this Halloween competition yeah. to make the scariest, like make your own scary movie. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to get into this. But no one knew like why I was so into editing or like good at it. But I just <laughs> didn't tell anyone why. <laughs> um, but I made this whole like kind of documentary on how it happened. And we interviewed our house mom who had been working there for a long, long time. time. And she said that one day she came into the house in the middle of the summer and she was getting the house ready. There for was the renovations year. going. So it was a mess. Yeah. She said. Yeah. There was renovations going. And she said she walked into the living room and she saw this girl who was clearly a spirit of some sort. Just didn't look like a normal person just sitting there. And this girl started talking back to her and like having a conversation with her. And our house mom just said, it's OK. Everything's OK. Yeah. I'm going to go in the kitchen and she walked in, walked into the kitchen. When she came back, the girl was gone. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, it's okay. I know it's a mess in here, but I'll try and figure it out. Yeah. And she was I, upset obviously, that the like, house she was could a totally mess. be making that up. But right. it is odd that, because I remember very specifically when she was telling us that, like, she looked, and she's also a very, very religious, very religious, very woman. religious woman. Yeah. And she was like, I mean, she looked like she was going to shit her pants, even just telling the yep. story, like, Every time it gets brought up, she's and she said there's there's more instances of that. She's seen them in the kitchen and mm -hmm. things have moved and she's just seen endless examples for why it's haunted. Yeah. But you guys saw a couple examples. Yeah, definitely. Sid, I want to hear yours first, though, because you were in the house. I normally don't allow or not don't allow, but I don't like to believe in that stuff because it scares me. So yeah. I was anti, you know, like, oh, if there's a noise, I'm like, just. Just the house, just the house. like just the it's water. not a ghost, and I didn't ever really believe the ghost stories. But uh, one night I was the only one at home, and there's 21 girls that live in the house. So, like it's really rare when to be there by yourself, but everyone else was at meeting, and I was sitting there. I was sitting in the nook, so you know I can see the front door, mm -hmm. and I can see into the kitchen, and I'm watching TV, and all of a sudden I hear like the cabinets in the kitchen. Bang. Oh, like yeah no. banging or like clothes and i was like oh i wonder who's home because it just it's so normal for people to like come and go so yeah. i walk into the kitchen and no joke every single cat i'm i swear to god every single cabinet was just open and that is so fucking scary i had no idea what to do i didn't want to close them were the drawers open too no it's just all just like the cabinets. the cabinets like the top and the bottom all of them were open all of them open and then i I think I just, I grabbed my keys and I was like, I'm out of here. I was like scared. <laughs> I didn't want to deal with it. Dude, I'd be terrified. So <gasps> that oh is so my crazy. God. It was terrifying. And then I was, afterwards, it just totally freaked me out because I was like, oh my gosh, Sydney, like, something's like, up. Like, what? Who would have done that? The yeah. door, back door Why? was locked. Why? Yeah. And I, oh, the door was locked. Back door was locked. Yeah. And that's a big thing is we started to make sure the back door is locked because we kind of thought some yeah. people were getting into the house. And we thought some guy like just came in. Remember when we were oh freshmen, gosh, some yeah. freak just like walked in. And he was just um, one of the girls like woke up uh, like from a nap and he was just staring at her yep. over her. Oh, was so wait, they had, like, staring no. over her? Yeah, yep, dude. Freshman year in was their wild. Room? There was no, the not much room. safety protocol at the house when before he you got there. I thought he was just, he was like, just standing in. over her. Was it a real person? Yes. Yeah, he walked yeah. into her room. No, 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 in no. The living she room. Was, she was in, like taking a nap on the couch <gasps> in the living room. Oh, in the living room? Because you know the door. Oh, I always thought it was in her bedroom. Okay. They, oh they God, made that door lock, like permanently lock. 
yeah, yeah. the back that other one too yeah, so yeah. yeah oh my god that is so scary i know there's like peeping toms and they're like you know laughing about it i'm like that's actually terrifying yeah. i don't ever want to experience that <sighs> yeah oh, hell no okay i have a few little weird encounters yeah but i didn't live there in fact i only slept there like twice maybe and both nights weird shit was going on so the first thing i remember is my friend jessica my lovely friend she <laughs> her and i were sleeping in her room the, she slept in this room called the blue room I don't really know why, actually. It's called the Blue Room. Oh, because I think they have, like, letters up on there, too, that, like, say the Blue Room. That's another story. I'll get to that in a sec. But anyways, we were sleeping in there. She was sleeping on the top bunk, and I was also sleeping on the top bunk because our other friend was, like, home for the weekend, so I was sleeping in her bed. And so we were totally asleep. And out of nowhere, my friend Jessica sits up and literally is looking down at the ground kind of by, like, the entrance. And she's like, come on, Katie. Come on, come oh, to bed. And there was no one named God. Katie in our store. Or yes, there was, but no one that lived in the house. And she was like, come on, Katie, come to bed, come to bed. And I was like, <laughs> what? And she like clears it. She was literally like, come on, let's go. Yep, come into bed. But was she just sleep Come talking? to bed. And I was like, Jessica, Jessica. And she just like looks over at me, gives me this like death glare. <laughs> like I'm going to kill you. And then lays back <laughs> down and goes back to sleep. That's like sleepwalking though, sleep talking. Does she sleep talk? No, not that I've ever heard of. No. I wonder if she's had any other instances of that because I've seen people sleep talk and it looks a lot like that. I don't know. Yeah, it probably was, but it scared the or they'll give me the craziest looking me. looks where they look like zombies. She looked like she was gonna kill me. I was like Jessica, <laughs> and she literally looked at me and was like, and then just laid back down. I told her the next morning she was like, haha, and I was like, yeah, ha ha, because <laughs> you thought she was and like, well, I'm like, oh, I thought you were gonna kill me. I thought I was gonna die by my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally terrible so then i can't remember if it was the same night or a different night but at some point soon after or that same night i was sleeping in that bed and i kept hearing what sounded like someone crinkling like a walmart or a target bag like some type of grocery bag mm -hmm. and it sounded like someone was like going through it so i just assumed that one of the other girls was like up getting something because i was turned to the wall so i couldn't see and but it like kept going and kept going and i was like what the hell so i like flipped over to s assume that someone was like you know going through a bag or something and i turned on my flashlight and there's absolutely no one there but everyone's completely asleep oh, there is no, no bag anywhere and it was like oh it kind of sounds like a walmart bag no like it sounded exactly like someone sifting through a bag a bat. and oh. i was like what the fuck and so i was like okay so i like kind of was like i'm just gonna ignore that so i like went back just <laughs> like laid back down put the covers over my head <laughs> And then the sound comes back and it's getting like louder, like loud. And I was like, then it started to sound like someone took the bomber bag and was like putting it right next to my head. I swear to God. And I was like actually fucking scared because I kept like looking around and they were like, everyone was asleep. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I would like turn back over and like try and go to sleep and just be like, it's just in your head. But it got to the point where it sounded like someone was like right outside of my ear, like crinkling this bag. <laughs> and I don't know. I guess Dude, I like, I would freak out. I was fucking so scared, but I would was leave. Like, no, but like, where am I going to go? It was like three in the morning. That's why and, I never slept at that house. And I all heard of my too many friends, things. like, it didn't matter to them. So I don't know. Then um, this same room, like I said, there was like wooden letters up on the wall. And apparently the um, L would always fall off in the word blue. So it would, type, it would say boo room. Like, and I guess yeah. they could never get this L to stay on like, and they would like renail it, put it in a different yeah. spot, like try and move it around. And the L would fall off like every single time. And Kayla can vouch for that. My other yeah. friend who lived in the blue room, she was like, oh, yeah, all the time. The L was always falling off. And it was B-U-E. Oh, wasn't there a fire upstairs, too, at one point? Like, in the along? other room. Yeah. Yeah. But just upstairs yep. in that front. In the front room. Was that the L room? It was a. No, that no. was the sun porch. Oh, the sun porch. Is and where I the think fire it was. used to be an actual porch. And it yeah, lit on fire. Yeah. And I think. People say that the girls who lived in there um, after the fire, they went back to try and get their shit and everything was gone except for like one item for each girl that was like really important to them, like their mom's necklace or like mm -hmm. their, you know, stuffed animal or like something that was like sentimental to them stayed there. I don't know if it's true, wow. but mm. crazy. There's just been so many stories. Yeah. Like the amount of girls who have older girls I've talked about feeling someone combing their hair in the yes. middle of the night. That was always the one that would freak me out. Like, I can't remember I still who think it was about that, that told me that. I don't like having my hair over like 
the yeah, side or anything. They, I guess they had their head back on the pillow with their hair like draped over the back and they felt someone like combing, combing their, their hair. hair. I can't remember who told I me think that. Multiple people, have, multiple people that. have experienced, but I can't remember who exactly told me about their no. experience with it. But yeah, I, I stayed the hell out of there nope. at night hours. Creepy One time shit. I was hanging out in this room upstairs we were just chilling and this girl had on her mirror or on her um desk a mirror that's like touch sensitive you know like those mm-hmm. makeup mirrors yeah and it would go on and off by itself all the fucking time apparently but i was in the room and it started happening i was like oh my god you guys and they're all just like yeah like it just goes on and off i was like what the fuck <laughs> what and it was literally just like blinking on and off by itself it's in the though, corner by the house itself. is so old like the electrical yeah. is probably so and then they whack. unplugged it and oh, it did right. it again. And it still was going on. Un- I was okay, like, I was like shaking. Shit. I was like, I gotta leave. And they were all just like, dude, this happens like literally all the time. Constantly. They didn't really think anything of it, but I was. Did you have anything else out. that happened, Sid? Um, okay, yeah. One night, th- so four of us were in one bedroom. It's very crammed. I mean, I thinking about that now, it is like two sets of bunk beds. Yeah, and tiny. It's straight room. up a fire hazard. We bro. had <laughs> shit everywhere. Yeah, like our room was a disaster. <laughs> and so our. Our room was like an L shape, so you had to go around a corner, and then all the bunk beds were in one area. Yeah. So you can't, couldn't see if someone was like coming in the door until they got past like the, you know, that little door step or whatnot. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. But um, girls would come home late at night. Um, you know, they're out drinking or they're just out hanging out or whatever. And we had one girl that lived with us that year that would come home like pretty drunk sometimes and was hilarious because she'd like. It was really klutzy and pretty much fall down the stairs and then like oh my God. slam into the walls. Wait, I want to know who this is. Well, Say the first letter of her name. A. <laughs> well, that's so oh. cool. Okay, tell us after. Okay. I have a Keep few going. ideas of who that could have been. <laughs> but it would be so loud. Like it was, it was actually really annoying because she'd freak out. She'd be like so drunk. and It was like such a big deal and slam into the wall. Oh, so no. she got to her room and like that's it was pretty amazing. late at night. And so... I didn't have okay so one night this happened right and I was like Emily because Emily was in the room with me yeah and I was like did you hear that and she's like yeah it's probably you know so and so and I was like yeah okay (laughs) and then it's kept going on like I was like oh my gosh I wonder what she's doing like why is she not in her room yet and so then we walk out into like the hallway and I have like my chunky patent leather heel like ready to throw (laughs) (laughs) and I literally it was so just bad. Sorry, girl. Really oh my it god, it's amazing. I was like, all I have is just like heel. And so I grab it and <laughs> we thought we heard saw something or heard something in the laundry room. So I just like threw the heel like at the laundry and it just like hit the washer or whatever. And then nothing happened. But it was terrifying. And we probably made it way worse because we we're like screaming and you know, and yeah. then oh my everyone's god. like, what's going on? And we were like, uh like we did not explain oh, it. But it was very just some weird things, yeah. The scary oh, that's shit. So creepy. Yeah. yeah. I never really experienced any of it for myself. The mirror thing is what fucked me up the most. Like that fucked me up because I was like happening in front of my face. I was like, why is this mirror lighting up? Yeah, that's really it scared the shit out of me. And then this one time freshman year, we were sitting, like my whole class was there, and we were like sitting in the living room and someone was talking about I think it was some ghost stories or something funny. I don't remember. <laughs> anyways we had this bunch of balloons in there for some other event we went to or something there was like a probably five balloons filled with helium sitting in the corner and randomly one of them would like come out like three feet in front of the others and just like start making a circle oh no while the other four were like just in the back and we're like what the hell what? and then we would like take the I swear to god we would put the balloon back in the corner and be like okay and this house is old as shit. Like there's, there's no AC. The heat comes like way from the baseboard. So there's not like it was like a yeah. you know vent or something. Yeah, we're gonna like see. Yeah, no, no. And it was just this one balloon, the same balloon every single time. It would start like <laughs> coming out and then like start making slow circles. And we were all just like, oh, probably a little girl <gasps> grabbing onto it the from the tuberculosis yeah. hospital. Ah! Yeah, Scary. some creepy shit. I honestly wish I had more stories to tell. I don't have like any paranormal stories from college i just have that one apartment thing and a few creepy things that have happened in this house and honestly i mean i feel like most youtubers like want their house to be haunted nowadays Mm. it's like good content but i'm like so Mm. afraid of it all yeah i would not want that i'm really hoping my next house is not 
you know, because it's just creepy. All this stuff lately, the yeah. studio. I'm really glad we're yeah. The out thing of the space. studio is driving me crazy because it's like I feel like it's causing kind of a weird energy too. Like we both feel low key creeped out, and then especially we're mm. talking about more serious things or like. Well, you weren't here when we did our recording for Mile Higher on the Paranormal House. No, but I felt like low key. Yeah, like just creeped out during it. Like it was weird. There was like yeah, it was like very. This place has a lot of energy, and it's like it not, does. It's like it doesn't feel bad but it doesn't feel good i feel mm-hmm. it's like very neutral but it likes to like fuck with it likes it to does. fuck with people and it's yes. like i'm i don't know like i guess i'm very like in tune with like uh, my yes. surroundings i guess and yeah you, like you can literally feel like the energy shift sometimes because you it's, really like, sometimes can. it's like sometimes it's fine and sometimes it's like jolly and good and fine and fun and whatever but like other times you come in and it's like ooh. And, you know, this, the haunted stuff here started happening way before we built this studio. So, and, and before Lights Out was even started, we always like to blame Josh and be like, it's Lights Out and it's his fault. <laughs> but yeah, we started having creepy things happen like as soon as we moved in here. Well, if you go back to some of our old Halloween episodes from the basement here. Remember all that creepy shit was happening? And no, then we, I don't like, remember creepy stuff happening in the basement. Remember we heard the sounds up in my attic. And so me, you and Josh like recorded us going up and checking the... I think we were just doing that to be funny, thing. though. No, but we wanted we were... to see what was up. Yeah, like, well, I yeah, I think we were to an extent because Josh was like, "There's a haunted, <laughs> haunted doll up there, probably." Oh, right. I remember. Yeah. So we were like, "Let's find out for ourselves." We opened it. There's nothing. There's a but... haunted doll. But yeah, remember when we first moved in here? We we thought there was some haunting, creepy shit going on. So yeah. I don't really know. I feel like this land could there could be something going on. It's very strange energy. Say, in if this you look whole at the history of this, and I don't want to like go into it too much, and like obviously because. Yeah. Yeah, but there is some interesting history to this, to this uh, area neighborhood, neighborhood, for sure. Yeah, an area, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, let us know your paranormal stories. Yeah. We definitely want to hear what you guys have experienced. And I want to hear what you guys are going to be for Halloween this year or what you were if you dressed up, if you mm-hmm. had the energy. Yeah, Send, tweet us pictures of your costume we'd like to see. But that's going to be it. Hopefully you guys had a lovely Halloween if you celebrate. Keep safe out there if you're trick-or-treating. Yes. And if you're trick-or-treating. I mean, maybe you're trick-or-treating with your kids. You yeah, know? oh, that's true. That's, that's true. And adults do trick-or-treat. What would you do know. if like an 18-year-old or 20-year-old came to your door asking for candy? They would you be? Can- yeah, sure. You would do it? I don't give a fuck. Whatever. I would too. I, I think it's kind of cool matter when to adults me. trick-or-treat. Yeah, sure. So, anyways, I hope you all had fun and have a safe Halloween. We we will see you fellas on the next sesh. But until then, keep it fucking fresh. fresh.